Hi everyone, thanks for, thanks for coming along. Um, my name's Lewis and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to talk a wee bit about some of the work that I've been doing with Nutch. Um, and specifically the 2.x branch of Nutch, which we've been developing for a while and which differs quite significantly from um, the 1.x one, the one point X, now trunk branch. So 2.x uh, it's not under as much development, I wouldn't say. The, the release cycles are not as, um, you know, kind of di dynamic. There's not as many release cycles as there is for the one point uh, branch. But it's, it's a code base that's, that's coming on leaps and bounds the last um, two or so years, I think, actually. Uh, so again, thanks very much for coming along today. And just something to, for me to say uh, before I go on too much. I, I wanted this to be a tutorial, but I didn't want for people to have to pay to, you know, maybe learn about Nutch or something like that. So in a sense, um, it'll maybe work out better that it's a pre presentation. Uh, and and if, you, if you've got any questions or you want to ask any questions, then please just interrupt. I've got about maybe, I don't know, about 15 odd slides, but I'm going to be referencing a lot on the Nutch um, code base, the 2.x code base on SVN. Um, specifically with regards to configuration and, and getting your crawlers up and running. So, a bit about myself. Um, I'm a member of the foundation uh, for maybe about a year or two. Um, project chair for um, a project called Apache Gora, which I, I said a wee bit about yesterday. Uh, Gora is a fundamental aspect of the Nutch 2.x branch. Hence the reason we've been kind of developing both code bases in tandem. Um, I work on a project, anything, any two, three, which is about parsing and extracting um, structure from HTML, embedded structure in HTML. And I'm going to say a wee bit about my involvement in any two, three. So I wrote a plugin for Nutch that enables you to scrape out stuff like uh, micro formats, micro data, etc., from HTML. Um, I do some more development than using right now on a project called Apache OODT, which is a less traditional type of project, I suppose, for Apache. It's more geared towards scientific use cases. Um, I'm a, a member of the, the, uh, travel, ass the travel Assistance Committee um, to help people um, that want to maybe travel to ApacheCon or other places. Um, we provide financial assistance in order for them to do so. And uh, recently, a mentor for Apache User Grid, uh, which is an incubating project right now, platform as a service project. Um, so I spend quite a lot of my time doing, um, you know, coding and skipping between projects, but I like also having an opportunity to, to try and talk about some of the stuff that I do. Okay, so as I said, I've not actually got maybe um, 20, 30, 40 slides. I've got about 15 odd slides. But there's quite a lot involved in, on another thing as well, uh, if you're interested in actually getting the code, um, I would advise you to go to the Nutch site and the downloads page just now, if you want to maybe skip through it, if you're interested, go to the downloads page just now and grab the 2.21, which is the most recent release of the 2.8 code base. Um, or alternatively, you can check it out from SVN, so there's instructions how to do that on the Nutch site. So if you're interested, get some code just now. Uh, so the key concepts are Nutch, Nutch configuration. Um, in a sense, the amount of configuration is excellent. It enables you to build a really fine-grained and fine, well-tuned web crawler. However, it's a barrier in the sense that there is a lot of configuration options to get up and running with, both within Nutch and within the Gora configuration that you're required to do. And um, designing maybe of a solar schema or schemas for indexing the data. Um, going over how to set it up, how to use, Nutch 2.x is only released as um, source code. So there's no binaries. You need to build the project manually. Uh, so just going through that kind of stuff. And then some, script, some scripts that are uh, bash scripts that are included within the project that you can execute tasks for various uh, 
the sequence of tasks to, to, to start to crawl data, whether it be on the web or file system. Um, local crawling, a bit about this plugin architecture, and I'll go through uh, the any 23 plugin that I wrote. It's, it's quite a, a simple example, and, and uh, it shows you how, what interfaces you need to extend if you're wanting to write plugins for much, how to register the plugins, and some other configuration as well. And then just a, a bit in the end about um, running Nutch on your Hadoop cluster for, for large for large scale crawling. Okay. So as I said, you can get um, Nutch uh, at the download URL. Um, but what, as I said, what I want to, to do is skip between um, the site quite a lot and Two seconds, please. We recently um, kind of rebranded the project description of what Nutch is, just to show you what I was talking about about the release cycles here. Um, I came on the project around 1.2. I ended up the release manager in three, and we started focusing on, on the one branch as, as mainline development. Um, in September of 2011. Since then, we've done 1415. We released the 2.0 code base in July of 2012. But since then, the 1.x branch has featured kind of more um, developments. And the last one of 2.21 was a bug fix release for 2.x branch, specifically for this bug here, which is incorrect um, conversion of byte buffers to strings, which meant that crawls were getting held up at various stages, so, um, you know, what is Apache Nutch? The Nutch was developed um, by Doug Cutting and, and various others, um, predominantly at Yahoo, as uh, uh, an, an alternative to, to commercially motivated search engines, so that you could understand page rankings, how rankings work. Um, but since then, it's, it's changed a lot over, over recent years. I mean, I think in 1.3, it was decided, at that stage, Nutch was a search engine. So you had an interface, it used Solar in the back end, you could deploy a web application, uh, and you could actually do all the search, self-contained with the Nutch project itself. When other projects came around, like Solar, for example, the, uh, the initiative was made to try and offload more of the, the code and, and rely on these projects, which are doing an excellent job, but the stuff that they do well. So, as I said, there's now two um, code bases for Nutch. Uh, and essentially, the, Nutch is just really a Hadoop, a Hadoop application. All we do is submit a job file to the, to the job tracker, and that deals with everything that we need to do if we want to run it on Hadoop. But the distinguishing feature of the 2.x branch is that we use Apache Gora for the storage abstraction so that you can persist your um, host data or web page data into any um, data store supported by Apache Gora, which currently is Cassandra, HBase, DynamoDB, Lucene Solar, Oracle NoSQL, and there's a patch for MongoDB as well. So, I mean, there's a lot, lot of different options that you can get. Um, and that, that's provided by the abstraction from, from Gora. So again, we, we use stuff like Apache Tika for, for um, parsing different media types that are out there. Um, Tika actually came out of Nutch as well. And the wiki's, not, the wiki's actually quite, quite good. It's, it's, it's up to date. It's, I mean, it's not um, the most modern documentation and, and things like that, but it's, uh, it's pretty comprehensive. So that's a bit of introduction to the project itself. Uh, and a bit about you know my involvement in the project. I would say right now we've we've got about five, about five or so active committers to the project. Um, a lot of committers left when um, you know Hadoop spun out of Nutch. A lot of the the key project committers left and went to Hadoop. So, uh, but anyway, key concepts. Uh, configuration. Well, Hadoop configuration actually shadows the model that was developed in Nutch, which is that you have default configuration 
that can fall back to if you don't have your, your own custom configuration. And that's in the form of a uh, nutch-default.xml file, which really just defines um, properties, a description of the property and the values, the key values, really. Um, and then you've got an override of that, which is nutch-site.xml, which are runtime overrides for the configuration. Um, nutch has a nice plugin architecture that you can develop custom plugins for really almost any scenario that you can imagine, whether it would be um, the any 2 free plugin that I'm talking about, um, your own specific um, media type parser, uh, an indexing plugin, um, goes on and on and on. If you're looking for maybe particular licenses, uh, there's a, a Creative Commons plugin, microformats, blah, 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 the list goes on and on. I'll show you some of the plugins when we, when we dig into SVN. Um, there's also a pluggable indexing art architecture in Nutch, which was put into the code base about uh, six months ago, which enables you to simply specify um, an elastic search that you want to index to, or solar, and we support solar for well, what was 4.71, which I think was released yesterday. Um, you can index the solar cloud, and I think there's a patch for MongoDB as well that you can index to. And I've, I've mentioned about uh, using Gora as storage abstraction. So what we mean by storage abstraction is that rather than ha maintaining in the one point X branch a crawl database, an in-house crawl database, the, crawl, the database and the state of web pages within the database, the fetch timing, the previously modified time, um, the outlinks, the inlinks, I'll show you the web page model, data model. Um, but all this stuff in the 2.x branch is persist persisted into a database. Um, ah, yeah, and we maintain this, this concept of a web page, which is um, natively in Gora, it's an Av Avro schema, so it's JSON schema that, uh, that, we, that we define and that we can compile into persistent data beans. Uh, these data beans are used at runtime when we get web page information and we, put, we populate the fields within the web page object. Uh, and then we populate the data. So, much configuration. I've said a bit about default configuration and the site overrides, the runtime overrides. Um, that's, quite, that's quite dark there. I didn't realize that that was as dark. Thanks. For, that's a bit better. Thanks very much. Um, so I want to, I want to look at uh, some configuration options. And it's going to be in-depth looking at the configuration options, but I'm also, before we do that, uh, going to have a look at the minimal configuration that you need to get up and running. There's some Gora pro, Gora.properties. is the properties file that needs to be on the class path in Gora when you initialize a data store. It needs to have some... Uh, store specific configuration in there. And there's an XML mapping file, which is in Nutch. Uh, typically, which doesn't change. The data model that's already in Nutch for both host data and web page data has been relatively static over, well, since we've been developing this. Um, so we'll go over a wee bit about that as well. What I would like to do is, is jump into uh, oh. Right. So this is um, this is on the Nutch Wiki just now. This file is contained within. Um, this is branches, and it's two point X branch is the, the, the one that, that I'm going to be talking mostly about today. So this is what it looks like. And the configuration, all configuration, is in the conf directory. So what we've got here is certain plugins for URL filtering, for example, for suffix filtering, domain filtering. Um, various plugins rely on some runtime configuration files. There's a schema here that you can put into Solar. You need to copy that across the solar before you start your solar server up. And 
Gorodot properties file, which I talked about, about XML mapping files, which are backend, spe backend specific for, for Apache Gora. And you can see some elastic search configuration in there. Um, and then the two uh, core configuration files in Gora is Nutch default and the runtime overrides, which is the template. So when I say it's, there are a lot of configuration options in Nutch, this is the configuration options that are in Nutch default XML file. You can see the properties on the left-hand side with regards, to, these have all got, if you look in the configuration file, these have all got um, individual descriptions about what they do, when you need to use them, etc. cetera. Um, what we've done here as well is, is separated trunk what's available there in the 2.x branch um, and which configuration options are uh, available in which branches. Uh, and there's a lot of configuration options here. As I said, though, that we don't need to include each and every configuration file. What I've got here is a, hopefully everybody can see that. What I've got here is I would like to just show you some minimal configuration. Uh, so much site.xml. So this is a configuration override file that I just wrote maybe half an hour ago. And there's an HTTP agent name, which when you crawl a site or file system, that's what your, that's what your crawler is identified by. In this case, it's Nutch 2.x big crawler. Um, what, what we, the, 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 the way I think in, I think in Nutch is that Nutch can certainly be used in a, um, a kind of spiteful manner. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But what we advise is that these minimal configuration options are implemented within your crawler configuration. And the aim of, of Nutch is to provide uh, a fully functioning, scalable web crawler that works at web scale and that, ab that abides with um, practice with regards to not hammering people's servers and, 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 and you know, trying to contact the server too much. There's ways that you can do that in the configuration. You can override that. For example, if, you, if you've got your own server or you've got your own servers and you want a multi-threaded crawler and you don't mind about the server being hammered, but other people's servers, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good thing to do, basically. So what we've got here is some, over, some uh, description of the crawler. I've, I've got the value here. This is a test crawler implemented for Apache Con. The URL, that, that URL there is just a link to this particular talk on the schedule for the uh, conference. And an email address where um, uh, web, uh, server administrators can, can contact you if there's something wrong or you've got you know, malicious crawler that's, that's going haywire. This one is quite an important um, configuration option, which is the HTTP content limit. This is specific for crawling the web, and I've set it to a minus one value, which means that um, you will parse and, uh, sorry, you will ob obtain, you will fetch the whole page. So effectively, that has been turned off, that configuration has been t turned off. By default, that. Uh, uh, the value is 65,000 uh, um, bytes, I think it is, or something like this. So that what it's saying here, if it's uh, content longer than the default option will be truncated and possibly parsing of the document will be skipped. Um, however, it's got to be taken into consideration that some media types are to parse and extract data from some media types is, is a more intensive process than others. For example, if you've got a lot of PDFs, extremely large PDFs, maybe many megabytes, you've got a multi-threaded crawler, then it can really choke, the parsing step can really choke up if you're, if you're running the crawler at scale. Um, this is a particularly important um, configuration option in the 2.x branch, which is the actual storage class 
the GORA storage class that you're going to use. These classes are documented underneath the different um, options that you have are documented underneath within that property description. So as you can see, I've set it to the HBase store here. However, you can set it to SQL store, Cassandra store, HBase store, Accumulo store, Avro store, which just writes into flat files, and data file Avro store, which is an extension of that. There's a memory store in Gora as well, which we predominantly use for testing, and it's not a persistent store, but we've, we've got that in anyway. As we use it for some tests and much. And to be honest with you, that's, that's the minimum configuration you need to get up and running with a crawler. It's not too much considering all the other stuff that's there. And um, it's, it's nice just to have some kind of, of guide as to, to, to how you know, easy it can be to, to get the configuration correct. Um, so I'll show you the other configuration file, which is the gora.properties file. So this is a gora specific file. And whenever you um, use gora in your applications, uh, this file always needs to be on the class path, along with the another XML mapping file, which is data store specific. Basically, what this enables us to do is set specific values. For example, the SQL store, you need to know which drive you're going to be using, where it, what URL it's available at, if there's a password associated with it. HBase store, there's some uh, comments there as to um, go to specific settings. Um, there's more functionality being added to data sto uh, the HBase store as well as Cassandra store in Gora. And the next release of Gora is going to be 0.4 which will pull into Nudge 2.3 when we release it. Um, so there'll be more options here. What you can do if you need to find out more about these options is you can go to um, the Gora website uh, and in current documentation on the Gora website, we've got information on different mo um, modules. So if I'm, example, in the HBase store, uh, we've got the Gora.properties file, the mappings that you need here. And there's, there's, you can do scanner uh, caches, for example, is a nice feature that you can add but, uh, to the properties file. But that's coming once we release 0 0.4. Uh, and the mappings file, which I'll, I'll go back to and go over that. So the, say if we're looking at the HBase mapping. So what we've got here is we define a table called web page and various families that we define within the, um, the web page table. For the web page table itself, we define a key class, which is how we're going to identify the data in HBase. In this case, the key is going to be of type string. And we define a package name, which is the generated data bin from the Avro schema which I'll show you the Avro schema after this. This is, this, although the web page configuration is not default, the way that this is set out is completely default for how Gora HBase mapping has to be read in. So for each field, we define the name of the field, the family that, that, that it relates to, and an optional qualifier attribute, which enables you to more um, effectively identify various fields as the data sets grow. So this is an example of the, the fields and the, the data that we are actually picking up from web pages. So we've got the status of the page, previously fetched time, fetch time, and the content, protocol status, text, title, and some other things, how we um, are able to uh, extend the scope of the crawl, stuff like outlinks and, out and inlinks specific page metadata, which might be um, embedded structure that we want to specifically put into metadata, or it might be the geo position of the server that the web page came from. We can put that kind of stuff into a metadata marker, a metadata map. Um, it might be even the IP address that the, the page, um, the server resides on, you know? 
And so that's some mapping. What I would like to do is quickly go through the data beans that we've got. So this is in the source directory of 2.x, and it's in Gora. And this is what the JSON looks like. Again, very similar to the XML mapping. Um, and this enables us to read this in with the Gora, comp uh, the Gora compiler and compile this into persistent data beans. You can see that we've got two nested records. So it's a, type, it's a, it's a web page record. We've got the package name, which is where we're going to compile it into. Um, all the fields, we've got two nested records, which are protocol status and parse status, respectively. These are subsequently compiled into their own individual classes, which are used at, at various stages. Um, the parse status, of course, when we invoke the parser tool. And at the bottom here, it's, some, it's probably valuable to note here that uh, I said that these, this data being the model that we have for this concept of web page, this has been reasonably static. But we added in this batch ID field not too long ago. And um, what happened was that batch ID is when we generate a fetch list, we assign a batch ID for that, that um, group of URLs which we're going to try and fetch. So we can fetch by um, batch ID, we can parse by batch ID, we can update the web table by batch ID, um, and we can generate new fetch lists. But this batch ID was something we added in. And when we're trying to get maybe domain sp uh, statistics from data within the database, um, it was through null pointer exception because it was trying to look for a page. Uh, and it was trying to look for a value for the batch ID field that for some URLs that were already in the database simply was, it wasn't available. So we were getting the null pointer exception back. So it might be something to think about that if you're trying to, if you, um, write your own plugins for Nudge, then this metadata field might be an option of where to put uh, additional metadata as opposed to maybe creating another um, field because you can try and avoid um, you know, running into those types of problems. So, there we go. So that's a bit about the Nutch configuration, a bit about the Gora specific configuration, and a bit about the actual data model itself and how you're physically mapping this into the back end data store. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yep. No, no. Right, okay, so you mean once you, you have indexed data and you want to see it? Okay, no problem. Right, so what, what I can do here is I'll show you, say we've got the, um, something, a concept here is that when we push this data into the database, the database is a record of the web graph, okay? We are not actually, and when we go to search, when, we build, when we're building a search stack, we're not physically searching the database. We would search an index, um, which currently can be Solar, Elasticsearch, Solar Cloud, or uh, MongoDB, okay? So I'll just show you what the schema looks like for Yes. When, right. Yes. When we when we invoke we invoke a tool called Index, which goes to HBase or Cassandra or something else, pulls data and pushes it into Solar, which creates a, a Solar index, or pushes it into Elasticsearch. Okay. So see when we're, we're actually getting an interface um, to the data in an index. Um, you're, you're, typically, your, your, your interface is not going on top of Cassandra or is not going on top of um, the web table information. It's an indexed manifestation of the web, page, the web table data, 
which would be in Solar or, or Elasticsearch. So if I can go back and show you the, the schema that you need to copy across to Solar, the Solar schema. So typically within schemas, we know we, we define uh, a lot of, 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 of uh, field um, information here. And what we've got is the fields down the bottom here. If you are implementing plugins that you want to uh, the data to be available through your, maybe your solar interface or something, you would need to add uh, the field um, characteristics here. This schema should be copied across to your solar server prior to um, starting your solar server up. And it just basically enables us to, to expose all those fields within your search engine. OK. So, notch configuration. Building 2.x project. Right. We use, a, we, use, we use Apache Ivy for dependency management. Um, the Ivy file with all the dependency um, revisions, the versions, can be located in the Nutch directory under Ivy and within Ivy.xml file. So um, what you can invoke is ant hyphen project help which will give you a description of all the ant targets available to invoke via the command line. The default target is ant runtime, which compiles the code and puts it into a directory that you can either run your crawler locally or uh, it'll build a dot job file that you can then um, submit the job to the, the job tracker and run on your Hadoop cluster. So the, the, the runtime local directory is for running maybe locally on uh, a laptop or on you know, one, one node. Uh, and as I said, the other option is to, run, to deploy the job file to the job tracker. So this is the Ivy stuff here. You can invoke it from the command line. And this is all our, our imports. What you need to do here there's one final thing that you need to do with regards to configuration, which is the Gora backends. What we've got here is Gora core artifact, which sits at revision 0.3, okay, which is stable. What, a patch that I wrote into Nutch around maybe two months ago, three months ago, whenever it was, was that we can actually use Gora snapshot artifacts. So, there's, more, there's improvements in the snapshot artifacts which are published on a nightly basis, and you can pull in snapshot artifacts. What you need to do if you want to use a specific backend, Gora backend, is uncomment these dependencies, whichever dependency, Gora backend, that you want to use. For example, if I wanted to uncomment, if I wanted to use HBase, then we'd remove the comments here, which would then subsequently down download the Gora HBase 0.3 artifact. So that's one last bit of configuration that we need to do with an Ivy in order to build the project. So so these are the targets that we, um, that we have. We can run a, a simple benchmark uh, to benchmark uh, an example nutch crawl we can generate the Eclipse configuration and load Nutch directly into Eclipse if you want to start developing your own plugins and stuff. The um, runtime target is the default target for compiling and running the code. And there's a lot of other um, targets there for generating maybe the distribution, the release stuff. There's a sonar target, which enables you to see how uh, many tests there are within um, Nutch, et cetera, et cetera. So what you'll see is that, so I've already done ant runtime. And in the runtime directory, we've got deploy and local. If I go into deploy to show you what it looks like, 
we're given a snapshot uh, job file here which contains all the Nutch configuration that you define. You need to do your configuration prior to, to uh, generating uh, this job file. And the bin um, directory, which simply contains um, some scripts that we can invoke uh, we can invoke individual commands. I'll go through these commands in, in the um, typical crawl procedure, the sequence of typical crawl. So we've got inject, you can inject hosts as well as um, seed URLs, generate fetch pars update database. These inject generate fetch pars update database is an example of kind of typical crawl. No indexing has been done, nothing's to be done. So if you just invoke the Nutch script, this is printed out for you and you can see the, um, all the stuff that, that we're able to do. We've got some nice tools there, parser checker and index checker. Based on which plugins are available on the plugin um, uh, conf configuration, that we can just, in an ad hoc manner, invoke parse checker. Oops. So I'll invoke this actually within uh, the local directory as opposed to the So all tools give you some help if you, if you don't invoke them with the correct number of arguments. Here, the parse checker enables you to dump the text out from a web page, force for a particular mime type, and, and put in a, a URL. So if you had some maybe um, non-conventional markup or something in the web page that you had a plug-in for, then you can just on the fly check, it, use these tools and, and find out what's going on. The index checker tool is, is useful for doing that kind of stuff as well. Uh, and so that's the local directory there. Again, you've got the, the configuration directory. You've got the lib, which contains all the Java archive resources pulled in by Ivy. Um, and you've got a log, which is uh, just normal logging for the tools. Plugins. So these are, these are some of the plugins that uh, come packaged with Nutch. Various protocol plugins for doing secure fetches of HTTP resources, file plugins and uh, F, F, file transport protocol plugin and file plugin for various protocols. Um, a lot of URL filtering that we're able to do to keep some pages from being in the database um, and to filter out maybe uh, URLs with um, characters that would maybe represent queries to the web page. Some PARS plugins, HTML, JavaScript, meta tags is a nice plugin which pulls out metadata from the head. PARS Tika plugin deals with a whole, whole variety of underlying um, media types. And the pluggable indexing, so Solar and Elastic are in this particular bit. The, uh, the other plugins haven't been put onto the, this particular uh, configuration and some, some indexing stuff which adds nice fields, additional fields to the, to the metadata. So uh, I think that's all that's in there. And then a test directory, which, which we're not really too interested in just now. So that's a bit more about um, building the project and, and getting up and running with it. The script which I talked about briefly. We've seen what's in the, the bin nutch script. There was a class called crawler where you would just invoke a tool within the bin nutch script that would say nutch crawl. Now what we do is we have, we've deprecated that class and we have now a crawl script which essentially chains together a lot of different tools within the bin nutch script. Uh, and this is how you would invoke the crawl script. You pass in a seed directory. The seed directory contains a flat file containing URLs, protocol, um, domain, domain suffix, domain suffix, 
the, the URL that you, that you want to index your solar data to, and the number of rounds of fetching you want to do based on the URLs that you've got, the in-links and the out-links that are extracted from those web pages as you move forward. So this is the sequence of operations that you would do for an example crawl. Um, specifically with regards to Nudge 2.x, if you go into the wiki, you'll find a much, much, much more in-depth account of what these tools do. Uh, and again, um, when you go into the bin Nudge script and you invoke uh, any tool that's in there without the correct parameters, it will print out some help for you to let you understand uh, how to invoke the, um, the tools properly. So we inject URLs from, from a flat file. We generate a fetch list, which um, in 2.0, the 2.x branch assigns a batch ID to various URLs, which enables us to group them and fetch them. The next stage is fetch, which actually goes out there and gets the URLs. We then, you can, you can, there's a configuration option that you can put on the fetcher for you to invoke a parsing fetcher. So do parsing while you're doing fetching. The only thing is though that it's not advised to do that because if something goes wrong with the parsing, then it can subsequently crash the fetching job. Um, another thing is there's a generation over property override which limits the amounts of URL, the, the number of URLs which can be put into any one batch ID. What I would advise is rather than, than having large figure for this configuration option, generate many, many more smaller batch lists because then if something goes wrong when you're doing the fetching, um, you can, you can, you've not lost as much um, investment of time and resources into fetching huge, big batch lists. What I would advise you to do is try to be fetching for no longer than maybe for any batch list, maybe half an hour, an hour, then you know, move on, keep, keep the cycle going rather than just continuously fetching and fetching and fetching. We have some people that come onto the users list that, that say, um, you know, I, I invoked a crawl some three days ago and something's gone wrong and uh, you know, what do I do? How do I recover from that kind of stuff? And the reply is generate smaller but many more fetch lists so that something like that doesn't end up happening. So that's PARS. Update database is when we feed back in and associate outlinks and inlinks extracted from web pages with those web pages. If, if we determine that they're good for fetching, we can then, when we regenerate, so this is an iterative process, when we regenerate, we don't go back to inject, we just regenerate fresh batch IDs for fetch lists, which we can then go out and get. Invert links is a, um, tool for the 1.x branch, which enables us to build a web graph. There's actually ongoing work to have that done by Apache Giraffe. Um, and then finally, which is what you're asking about yourself, sir, which is the index command. So that is when we actually do the indexing after we've done the parsing. So we've extracted out, for example, you know, the head, the title of the web page, the content, the textual content, various other metadata object, um, bits and pieces. And we don't actually do the indexing to one of the supported indexing backends until we invoke the index command itself. No, no. It, the question was, is it essential for much to run on Hadoop for this to happen? No, you can run it locally on one node. Um, you can actually, you can build a, a very, very thorough, well-operated, well-managed web crawler just using one, one node. There's, you don't need large infrastructure to do so. Um, so that's something to be taken into consideration. Um, give me two seconds here, please. So no, you can run it small. You can small, run small, um, well-defined vertical crawls with Nutch or the 2.x branch is geared more towards large, you know, big data searches, um, hence the reason that we've got Gora in there as well. So what I had in this slide was, you know, let's try it out, let's go through and do it. Um, I think I've got five or so minutes left here. What would be better is that if you guys today or tomorrow are interested in, in getting up to speed more with Nutch, I'll be around, we can sit down, we can get through some stuff. Um, 
what I had here was going through a, an example of a plugin, which is any two, three. I'll go through that towards the end, just quickly for a couple of minutes. And there's, there's a slide there about running on Hadoop cluster, which is in the deploy directory. And all we do is use the bin nudge script, um, which submits the job to the job tracker, and then uh, does the distributed computing of that for us. There's very little difference between running locally in one node and running large-scale deployments on a Hadoop cluster. Uh, no. The, it doesn't need to be on every single node. You just put it on the job tracker and it deals with it for you. Right? Um, we can get through that as well. If I, can just get, if I can just get to the end. So, what's coming in Nutch? Sitemap parsing is something we've been looking at and there's patch there for 2.x and for 1.x. We rely on a third party library called Crawler's Common, uh, Crawler Commons for that, which I've been working with various others on to, to try and get going. We've got a wicket-based GUI coming, hopefully this year for Google Summer of Code. I've expressed my intention to try and mentor that project, which would enable you to, from within inside a web application, deploy your, your um, crawler and do all the configuration from within a web app. That's where all the nuts issues are. It's a busy um, Jira instance. And ask for any f features that you want, even if it would be plugins and you want to do something a wee bit more custom, come on to the, the dev list or the users list and ask. It's, they're pretty um, helpful lists. There's a lot of help out there. Uh, what I've got here is questions. And uh, as I says, I'll be around until tomorrow night when I'm leaving to go back to Scotland. But uh, if you've got any questions, you're around today, then please ask me. Um, I'll be more than happy to help. And I would just like to say, before I finish up, thanks very much for coming along today. Um, as I'd said, I wanted it to be a tutorial and we could maybe get through it in a more kind of intimate manner. But I hope with regards to the configuration, which is a hurdle, which is a bit, it's a pro and a con, but it's a hurdle because there's a lot of stuff to get up to speed with there before you can you know, deploy your crawler. Um, and I think there's maybe going to be hackathons and stuff. So if you want to maybe um, write some code for parsing or indexing or whatever it might well be, then I'll be more than happy to sit down and go through some stuff. User at dev at nutch.apatch.org. There's my email address. I'm on Twitter as well. So that's me. Thanks very much for coming. So unwinding. Right. Right. So the question was, um, if there's like maybe cyclic uh, URLs that point, or even redirects, maybe we do. We've got full support for redirects. What happens is we set. Uh, we've got a fetch schedule. Okay. And you can either do fetching based on what, mime, what media type the document is that you're fetching. So for example, you might want to fetch PDFs less than you fetch, fetch HTML, because PDFs are gen, more generally static in nature, whereas HTML is dynamic. So you can do that. You can do it based on, we've got an adaptive fetch type, which would, um, based on when the, the, the URL was last changed, would make it a more it's more uh, appropriate for a fetch the next time round. But with regards to cyclic dependencies, what you can do is there's a number of things you can do here. Um, you can prevent uh, if you're wanting to focus your search for maybe one particular domain, uh, you can prevent it from going outside that domain. So again, what you need to do is look into some of the more advanced configuration options. But there's, there's definitely support for the crawler. Um, getting stuck in this, um, you know, cyclic manner, um, based on. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, I get you. I get you. So you might have you might have actually a record of the of the, the full URL, but because it's a shortened one, then you, you, it's it's difficult to make that association. Aye. Um, well, what 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 Nutch will do? We'll take that as a redirect, and it will follow that through. You can follow through. You can determine, or more to the, more accurately, sorry, you can configure how many redirects you want to follow. Um, there's a lot of a lot of advanced. Um, you know, more low-level details with regards to that kind of stuff as well, so that Nutch Crawler is not getting bogged down by maybe going round in these cyclic um, URL trails, you know. Um, so that's it. Okay. Well, thanks very much for coming along. I appreciate it. Thank you.